In Creo Parametric, you can use layers to manage visibility and perform collective operations. Back in 2018, I made a couple videos on how to use layers in part mode and assembly mode. Those videos were made in Creo 3.0. In this video, I want to cover six different enhancements to layers for visibility management since then. First off, here I am in a part model. You can see that we've got our model tree and I've got my default datums. They have the names P underscore Z, X, and Y. And then we have a coordinate system called origin. And right now these objects are visible and the icon indicates that they are visible as well. I'm going to access my layers. Now I can access the layers from the layer tree icon in the model tree. This, of course, got an overhaul a few versions ago, so the icons look a bit different than in the previous video on layers that I made. I'm going to click on my layer tree. I have my layers opening up in their own separate window. Now I've got this layer here called Default Datums, and you can see that it contains those four objects I previously highlighted. One enhancement since Creo 3.0 is that if you hide anything, regardless of whether you do it manually in the model tree or by using a layer, it will end up showing the appropriate status in the model tree icon. For example, let me select this layer. I will right mouse click and hide, excuse me, right mouse click and hold and then choose hide. And then let's deselect and now those layers are hidden. Here you can see that the icons or the symbols for them in the model tree are grayed out as well. This did not happen in Creo 3 and earlier. I went back and verified those icons would appear as if the objects were still visible. So now you have consistency of the model tree icons, regardless whether you are using layers to control visibility or selecting objects in the model tree and right mouse clicking and holding. Second enhancement, there is a, another layer that will show up called the hidden items layer. And there are a couple ways that you can end up making it come back. And to show that first, I'm going to take that layer and show its objects again. And I'm going to leave this visible while I create a brand new feature. I'm going to create some asynchronous datums or what people call creating datums on the fly. I'm going to start the extrude tool and I've got to create a sketch, but let me move my layer tree aside. I can go to the datum drop down menu on the right hand side of the dashboard and I can create datums and these datums will be embedded within the extrude feature. So let me click on the datum plane icon and I'm going to select this surface and I'm going to create it. Let's create it at an offset of two from that particular surface. And then I will click the OK button and then I will resume the extrude feature. And now it's automatically using that datum plane that I created on the fly as my sketch plane. Let me go in here and I'll just sketch in a circle. Let me locate it on here and I'll sketch it about yay big. Let's give it a dimension of two for this. And it looks like I don't have any other weak dimensions, but it must have locked in to some geometry. That's fine. I will hit the check mark. And so there you can see a preview of the feature. I'm going to flip the direction that it is going to be created. And then while I am defining the depth, once again, I am, oh, actually, before I do that, let me go to the options tab. I'm going to change the depth option to, to reference. And then let's create a, another datum plane on the fly. Let me query select to the surface that I can't see. I will use an offset of two. Let's click the OK button here and then resume the dashboard. So now it's using that datum plane that I created on the fly as the depth reference. So again, I created this extrude feature using two datums that were created on the fly. Take a look at the layer tree, what's going to happen as soon as I hit the check mark in the dashboard. Now we have this layer here called hidden items. So those are those 
asynchronous datums, those datums that were created on the fly, the ones that are embedded within the extrude feature. And so anytime that you create datums on the fly, hey, those are going to be added to a layer called hidden items. And you'll notice if I take that extrude, right mouse click on it and choose the delete button, you have the option to keep the embedded features, but I'm not going to keep them. I'm going to delete those as well and click the OK button. You'll notice that the hidden items layer is now staying in here. So once it shows up, it kind of stays there. And let me scroll back up to the top of the model tree. And I decide that, hey, you know, this particular datum plane that is one of the ones on the default datums layer, I want to hide it, but the rest of the default datums are hidden, or excuse me, are, are visible. And if I expand the hidden items layer, there you can see it on there. So there you have uh, a, another enhancement where you have this hidden items layer for any asynchronous datums or for any manually hidden objects. All right, now let's take a look at, uh, let's do this, let's go back and do the reverse. What I'm going to do is I am going to show this item so it's no longer on the hidden items layer, but I'm going to take the default datums layer and I'm going to hide it so those objects are no longer visible. But now let's grab one of those different datum planes. Let me choose a different one. Let's grab this one and I will show it. Well, now we have a shown items layer. So that way, even though that the layer itself is hidden, we can see that this particular object is a shown item. And so the uh, shown items, uh, this actually might've been around in Creo 3, but I just wanted to make that distinction, and there's another distinction that about these different uh, shown items that I'm going to make later on. Let me talk about a, another enhancement that we have, and to do that, I'm going to show all the default items. And let me go to the layer that has all my different planes on it. I'm going to choose show for that one. So now I have a ton of screen clutter, and so a couple icons were added starting in Creo 5. So for example, for the work that I am doing, I have this plane over here and I decide that also this plane over here, these are very useful for me. And I only want to, sh to see these two particular datum planes. I might call them layers, layers, I meant to say datum planes. I want to show only these two datum planes. Well, now you have this show only icon. And so now if I go to the hidden items layer, you can see that all the other different datum planes are now on the hidden items layer, regardless of these different planes being displayed. Similarly, I can now select these two different planes and we have this icon for show all except. So if I choose show all except, those two are no longer visible, but all the other different objects are visible of that type, all the different default datums and the uh, other different planes. So then that again is another enhancement. And there's one last thing that I want to discuss about the shown items layer. And this can be a little bit confusing. Uh, but before we go into that, let's reduce this screen clutter. Let's hide all those different objects. Let me select these and let me, I don't know, show them or whatever. Um, actually, let me just turn off my datum plane visibility entirely. I don't need any of that for the rest of this demonstration. Okay, so I've got this shown items layer. Let me hide those as well. Okay, so right now there's nothing on the shown items layer. And the next thing about Layer updates since Creo Parametric 3.0 relates to model-based definition. So here you can see that I have a bunch of annotations visible on the screen. Let me move my layer tree away from this note that is visible. One of the new enhancements deals with objects that are hidden by layers but are visible in the MBD state. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new layer with a rule. Let's go to new layer and I'm gonna call it annotations. And then let's go to the rules tab and let's go to options and turn on independent and associative. So it grabs everything that is going to correspond to whatever rule that I set up. 
I'm going to grab uh, any annotations in the model. Let me preview the results so we can see that there are 17 items that will end up being collected in here. Let me click OK out of the Layer Properties dialog box. And so there you can see all these different objects and you can even see them highlight as I move over them. So now I am going to right mouse click on the annotations layer and choose the hide button, but these objects are still visible even though they are hidden on the layer. And that is because the combination state is controlling their visibility. But this is gonna get into the weeds. I'm not gonna go into all the details on this in this particular video, because again, it, it gets into a bit of a complicated subject. But I want you to take a look at what happens to the shown items layer when I right click on the combination state and choose edit definition. Down here we have visibility. And right now there are two check boxes. The one for annotations and tables is checked. The one for supplemental geometry is not checked. And these correspond to a config.pro option called combined state type that deals with whether your combination state is going to control the visibility of these objects or you're going to choose layers to control them. So let me move this out of the way. I am going to uncheck this box and that way uh, what you'll notice is that supplemental geometry automatically gets unchecked when you uncheck this. Let me click on the OK button. And so now if I go to my shown items layer, you'll see that we have all these different objects are shown items because they are hidden on a layer, but they're actually visible in the model based definition combined state. And the combined state is not controlling the visibility of those different objects. So again, this really gets into the weeds in terms of MBD and layers, but I just wanted to mention this other enhancement. So again, the big things that you have since Creo Parametric 3 is that you have consistency in the model tree display regarding whether items are hidden or shown regardless of the method. And you have these hidden items layers and shown items layers that will give you indication of objects that are hidden or shown in a different state than what is indicated by other layers in your layer tree.